Okay, so I'm already over Windows 11. Besides the forced automatic updates, which are annoying enough in and of themselves, it's just trying too hard to be a tablet. It lacks a certain look and feel, one that Microsoft used to take pride in. I want to go back to a Windows experience that's actually exciting to use, but I don't want to get rid of modern Windows because it's the only thing that works with current sites and applications. Fortunately, I know a way to do just that, and by the end of this video, you will too. Today, we're going to go over how to install VirtualBox on a Windows PC. VirtualBox is a free and open source program used to run virtual machines. Now, a virtual machine is basically a computer within a computer. In my case, I typically use it to run older operating systems. This allows me to run programs and games that aren't compatible with modern versions of Windows. And let's be honest, sometimes I just get nostalgic and I just want to revisit the look and feel of Windows XP. And we're going to do just that. First things first, we're going to go ahead and open up the internet. Um, I'm going to use Chrome. You can use whichever browser you prefer. We're going to go to virtualbox.org. And you'll notice there's this big button here that says download VirtualBox 7.0. We are not going to do that because that version breaks a lot of things that were working in older versions. Unfortunately, this seems to be a pretty common trend for VirtualBox. Every time it updates, it breaks existing features. So we're going to go to Downloads. We're going to go to Older Builds. And the latest version I found that actually works with my operating system is 6.1.4. In my case, I already have it downloaded, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it up from my downloads folder. And it's going to give me a UAC prompt asking if I want to allow this program to make changes. We want to hit yes, we trust it. Why not? And it's going to welcome us to the setup wizard. We're going to hit next. Leave everything at the default here. We're going to hit next. Um, again, leave everything at the default. We're going to hit next. Um, it's going to show us this warning that says it's going to reset our network interfaces and temporarily disconnect us from the network. So as long as you understand that you can't really do anything else with your computer while it's installing, you can go ahead and click yes. Go ahead and hit install. Just for a split second there, we're going to lose our connection to the internet, which is fine. Alrighty, and it's already finished. So we're going to go ahead and leave this checked because we want to use it right away. Uh, I'm going to hit finish, and it's going to open the VirtualBox application. Now, we don't have any virtual machines yet. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and download some from archive.org. I'll leave links to them in the description down below. Um, I've already downloaded them because they are kind of big and they take some time. I didn't want to bore you guys with that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. We're going to go over to my downloads folder where I have the VDI images. I'm going to start with Windows 2000. I'm going to extract it to the folder I've already created for Windows 2000. And I'm going to leave that running in the background. I'm going to go ahead and go back to VirtualBox. We're going to create our new virtual machine. We're going to click New. I know there's an Add button as well, but we're not going to use that because that's only if you have an existing configuration file. We just have the virtual hard disk file, so we're not going to use that. Um, I'm going to name it Windows 2000. And see, it automatically detects that we've typed in Windows 2000, and it's going to select the correct version. If it doesn't, go ahead and select Windows 2000. And in my case, I'm going to go ahead and switch the machine folder, because um, I have an external drive that I want to use. I'm going to, the, in my case, the drive is called Data. Folder is VMs, W2K. I'm just going to select that folder. Next. I'm going to go ahead and give it 256 megabytes of memory, of RAM. Um, and I'm going to use an existing virtual hard disk file. Now, I'm pretty sure this extraction has not quite completed yet, so we're going to wait for that to finish up. And it's finished, so we're going to go ahead and let the XP machine extract to 
folder I've created for it and just proceed and since the uh, Windows 2000 file is already extracted, we can go ahead and add it. So we're going to click that folder icon. We're going to click Add. Um, in my case, it in my case is going to be in Data, VMs, W2K. So the idea is you want to find the Windows 2000 VDI you just extracted, and that's exactly what I've done. So I'm going to hit Open, choose, create. Now, we don't want to power this on yet. There's a couple of settings we want to go ahead and tweak. Since we're on a newer system, these settings are kind of essential. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the floppy drive. We do not need that. Um, I'm going to switch the pointing device to a PS2 mouse. I'm going to enable AI. I'm going to enable IO APIC. I'm going to enable PAE physical address extension, um, and I'm going to leave nested paging on for the time being. I keep forgetting if this is the setting we need to turn off for this operating system or if it's for a different one, but we'll see as we go. Um, I'll leave these settings as they are. Leave it as they are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the network adapter connected, but I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the cable. The reason we want to do this is because this operating system is horrendously out of date. There are no security patches, and it could probably get a virus just from being online. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that cable and hit OK. And normally I would go ahead and start this up just to test it out, but I did this myself just a moment ago. I'm pretty sure it's going to work, so I'm just going to go ahead and make another one for Windows XP. Call it Windows XP. Now I can see in the background here that the extraction for the Windows XP VDI has completed. So I'm going to go ahead with the configuration. I'm going to select XP instead of W2K because it's Windows XP. And I do recommend creating separate folders for each virtual machine. Otherwise, it's going to get all mixed up in there and you are not going to know what's what. And frankly, neither is VirtualBox. Uh, for RAM, I'm going to put 512. Um, you can put more if you want. I just haven't tested it with more yet, so I really don't want any malfunctions while I'm recording. Although there are probably going to be some, so again, use an existing hard virtual hard disk. Go ahead and click the folder icon, click Add, um, go to your VDI file. Again, make sure it's the one for Windows XP, not for Windows 2000. Hit Choose, Create. Now we're going to go to Settings. And we're going to make those same tweaks that we did in the other one. We're going to get rid of the floppy drive. Um, we're going to PS2 mouse. APIC, uh, PAE, and okay, here's the exception for Windows XP. We're going to make this one an SVGA controller with 3D acceleration enabled. Reason being, we want to be able to have a bit of a higher resolution for that one since it supports it. I know it says invalid settings down here. Ignore that. I've gotten it to boot. So, again, for the network adapter, we're going to disconnect it because it's way out of date. Okay, and we're done. So now, let's get to the fun part. Let's start up some of these operating systems. I'm going to start with my Windows 2000 machine. Maximize this. And notice when I maximize it, the screen size does not change. There is a good reason for that, and we're not going to change it at this time. Um, also, you'll notice when I click inside the screen, the virtual screen that is, my mouse cursor here will disappear, and I will not be able to move my mouse outside of the window. Ah, I love that sound. But the reason it does that is because it will actually capture my mouse cursor and keyboard, making them unavailable to the host operating system, which is Windows 11. 
if I want to switch between the two, i.e. I want to get my mouse and keyboard away from Windows 2000 and back to my PC, um, I will just hit right control. And you'll notice down here, right control is mentioned in the bottom right corner of the window. That is known as our host key. That's how we're going to switch between the two. So let's see. I'm going to deselect show this screen at startup because why would we want that? And I'm going to play around with Windows 2000 for a bit. Let's see, what do we have in here? I forget how to do pretty much. Oh, here's control panel. Okay. All right, let's see. Display. Screensaver. All right, check this out. We've got the Windows flag. Yay! <laughs> oh man, I'd forgotten about this thing. Okay, and in order to clear this, we just move the mouse um, like we would with any ordinary screensaver. These were more popular back when monitors would actually like get ghosting on them. Like they permanently have part of an image on them if you left them on one screen for too long. Um, you don't have to configure these if you don't want to. You can just play around with them. Apparently the default screensaver is just a black screen anyway, so kind of boring. Ooh, here's one. Wow. Some of you may be familiar with this one. This would be really good at raves. It also kind of looks like the Visual Studio logo <laughs> at some points. I wonder if this is what they based it on. That'd be funny. All right, Starfield Simulation. Wee! We're flying through space! Or what qualified as space back when graphics weren't as good. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and just cancel because we don't want to make any changes right now. I'm going to go ahead and shut her down. And actually, I spoke way too soon there. I was able to move my mouse outside of the... Um, virtual screen. The reason is because the operating system supports mouse pointer integration. If you move your mouse inside the window and click, your keyboard will automatically be captured as well. Um, if you move it outside and click, your keyboard will return to your PC. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and go into Windows XP. Maximize. Okay, usually it crashes after three iterations whenever it does. But it didn't, so we're good. Oh, I love that startup sound. I don't like that we don't have antivirus installed, but that's fine. And in this case, mouse point integration is not supported, so we get to see an example of when the mouse is being captured. Um, I'm moving my mouse beyond the edge of the screen and Windows XP will not let go of it. So I gotta hit right control to break it out. And what I can do is I can just click, it'll go back in. See, there you go, yay. Okay, yep, I get it, I get it. And we do not wanna run this because trust me, it is not going to work. Um, hit cancel. Um, let's see. Yeah, 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 go away. All right, so let's play around with... Actually, no, first there's something we need to do to set it up. Um, let me go ahead and hit right control to get out of here. I'm going to hit... Let's see, which one of these is it? Uh, okay, it's under Devices, Insert Guest Edition CD Image. And it's going to automatically, in the virtual machine, it's going to automatically pop up the uh, guest editions setup wizard. We go ahead and click next. And this is going to get us our mouse pointer integration, proper monitor drivers, and a whole bunch of other stuff that we need to get the most out of our Windows XP installation. So we're going to go ahead and install it and watch it go through all of this. Or maybe not because it takes a while. Yep, and see there, it just briefly reset our monitor because it was installing the correct driver. Um, 
It's going to ask us to reboot. Boo. But the good news is it's only going to reboot the virtual machine. So our primary PC will not be affected. And see up here, we now have mouse pointer integration. Yay! Even Windows is celebrating now. Okay, so let's see. It's going to tell us your computer's screen resolution and color depth are currently set at a very low level. Let's go ahead and click on that balloon. Click yes. It's going to bump it up just a teeny bit. Go ahead and hit yes to keep the settings. And we're going to do a more proper adjustment in control panel. Let's see. Uh, oh, appearance and themes, screen resolution. Um, <clears throat> let's see how much, how high can we go? Let's see what happens if we do 1280 by 960. Let's apply it. See what happens. Uh, hell yeah, we want to keep those settings. Let's do it. Okay. Um, let's get rid of these little guys. Um. Let's look at the screensavers again. Why not? Just something quick we can do. Flying objects, hit preview. Sixteen bit color mode. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and that's the only problem. Some stuff may not support quite this high of a resolution. Ooh, pipes! I'm sure we all remember this one. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> so let's see. Let's mark key. Oh, yeah, that's the te scrolling text. Um, oh, this is the one we all know. It ju it's literally just the Windows XP logo appearing in a new location on the screen. About every 10 seconds. So, yeah, basic stuff. We don't need one, so we're just gonna set it to none, hit okay. Let's see, what else can we do with this? Oh yeah, we can mess with, I think we may have Sam in here. I think we may be able to mess with Sam. Let's see. Okay, here it is, it's under speech. Okay. Check this out. You have selected Microsoft Sam as the computer's default voice. Swaw. Yeah, he glitches out whenever you write the word swaw in there. Oh, by the way, we have built-in DVD playback on this one. This is something that modern Windows OSs kind of omitted. Windows 10, you could pay for it, or you can just install VLC Media Player. That works too. Um, but anyways... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut this thing down. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. And be sure to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Once again, this is Ping Rob, and I'll see you next time. Or should I say...